Greetings, YouTube. We had another bargain Saturday today. Um, we went to a very lame flea market where there were only about six tables at the entire thing, and none of them had anything that either of us was interested in. Um, so we left there, and we ended up hitting a few uh, flea markets, and, I mean, a few thrift stores, um, a used bookstore, and get, just got lucky and found a few yard sales along the way between point A, to a and point B. So today was actually a clothing day for us. My wife got a rainbow sweater because, as she likes to say, she is seven. She has a couple of new tops, one pink and one salmon. Salmon. We have a couple of new skirts. So she has a couple of new skirts, which she got for a dollar each. One in pink and one in a, a mustard. And then I actually got some clothes today because a lot of the clothing I had from like the last couple of years is now way too big on my body. Um, so I actually have a new wool sweater, which is from Abercrombie & Fitch. This is the first piece of Abercrombie & Fitch clothing I have ever purchased. It's 100% wool, which I kind of liked. Um, a classic long-sleeved baseball-style shirt, um, which I don't think I've ever actually owned one of these before. My wife always likes those. Um, a new cotton top, which is kind of a heavy, not quite a sweater, but it's a heavy shirt, which is kind of nice because it's getting cooler. And this is very a very kind of drab gray color, but it's incredibly soft, um, which is really nice. And I can see myself just wearing this as a top all by itself. Um, and we also got some goofy things. My wife got a pen that has a goofy little dog on it with a big smile and big ears and eyes because she has a thing for pens, and for dogs and such. And I got myself some new earbuds which I got on sale because the ones I had, the uh, little foam covers died on me. And we have, of course, because it's me, we have media. Um, we have Avril Lavigne. Yes, yes, I know, Avril Lavigne. Um, but I happen to really like her voice. Um, next we have... 10,000 Maniacs in my tribe. Robert Palmer. Aerosmith. R.E.M. And John Mellencamp. I've always been a fan of his voice as well. I think it's a, he's got a great timber. And then we have a couple of animated Family Guy and Stewie, the untold story. I happen to really be a Stewie fan. I admit the show does have some humor that does push the balance of good taste, but that's kind of the point, though, isn't it? A Mythbusters episode, and this is the original Mythbusters DVD, I believe. Um, and a Nicolas Cage, Bangkok Dangerous. Now, I actually haven't seen the original in this film. Um, and uh, I realize that it is a remake of an actual... Hong Kong film, but it's Nicolas Cage, man, and nobody plays Nicolas Cage like Nicolas Cage. Next we have books. How You Say It, the fascinating stories behind over 600 everyday words and phrases. For example, snow job, um, smelling like a rose, and, and the explanations about why we have these, these phrases. Snow with an S. Snow with an S. It's not another kind of job. Um, Brian Greene's uh, The Fabric of the Cosmos, uh, Space Time and the Texture of Reality. Edward Hall, The Hidden Dimension. This actually deals with the physical space that animals and people like to have between them. Um, I know off the top of my head that Americans like 22 inches between themselves chest to chest and Europeans are comfortable with 14 inches of distance from chest to chest which is why Americans always think that Europeans are in their face because as far as the Americans are concerned they are. Um, John Causal's Amazing Grace, this is the man that wrote the Savage Inequalities book that I reviewed recently which was so profoundly depressing. Uh, I'm looking forward to being depressed again but he's a very nice writer, a very talented writer. Uh, you've got to read this. Contemporary American writers introduced stories that held them in awe. This is my wife. She wanted to read that. Um, and the Dictionary of Misinformation. And this is um, all about 
why people, the things that people wrong, are believing correctly, like leathernecks, the terms of the United States Marines did not originate recently, nor does it have the reference either to the sunburn that might conceivably result from dirty duty on the shores of Tripoli, or the kind of stiff military bearing off and associated with the Marine Corps. It was, in fact, first applied to the light infantry who were the elite of George Washington's army and wore dashing leather helmets with horsehair crests. That kind of thing I eat up. And, of course, it being a bargain um, weekend video, we have a special guest. A very, very still bird. I have a penchant for um, glass and ceramic, and I think this may have been a gift many, many years in the past. I hope you enjoyed today's video.